Hey guys, I'm meteorologist Chris Tomer, and let's talk some mountain weather. And of course, Bullseye continues to be the Pacific Northwest, BC, and Banff. And in fact, let me show you a photo from uh, friend Jim Hennessy up there, who is a patroller, ski patrol, at Banff Sunshine Village. And he said conditions are, are good, and he knows they've got more snow coming at them with this type of pattern. But eventually, um, that whole uh, that storm track will shift south and affect uh, California. Um, the southern tier of the Rockies, and there's another storm behind that. So all in all, there are two storm systems that I have lined up. Let me just show you what we're looking at here. And this is uh, infrared satellite. I'll mark both storms. So there you've got one big one right here and another one behind it. So this would be storm number two. This is number one. Both of them play prominently in the forecast. Let me just show you what the flow looks like. So jet's coming around like this slamming into the Pacific Northwest, BC, Banff, um, Pacific North. That's why you're getting so much snow in those areas. Well, eventually, and let me just mark the high as well, the highest point important. So it's roughly right in here. It's kind of protecting the West. Well, eventually, that's going to get dislodged. Um, this whole uh, storm, this trough of low pressure will sink to the south through California and then move as a low pressure through the southern tier of the Rockies. So the whole thing's going to buckle and change the pattern completely across the West. Um, I wrote about it this morning on my uh, blog. I actually called it the two storm combo for early November. So basically this lad, this starts like 11-1 and lasts through 11-8 and I'll show you my snow forecast for both periods. But it looks to me like the first track, the first low goes more south. Second one kind of comes in from the north. I, the second one might end up being the big winner when you look at the, the flow of the two, the second one looks, and it's early, but it may have the far better flow, the superior flow or a graphic flow of the two. So there are the two storms. Um, we just outlined both. Um, and let me just look at the jet pattern here because I've got these in as high res. So this is the this is 11.3, and it's like I've talked about the last few days. This is This one will be more of a... Uh, a medium, low to medium type storm for the Sierra. It, it, it's too fast. The track is not right for California and the Sierra. It's going to be, and the aura graphics are just not there with the jet orientation that way. So there it is. It's got a positive tilt. It's definitely on the move. Um, here's 11.4. So low's already out of California. It's taking that southern track, uh, but even this type of track will not be optimal for northern New Mexico. Not what we're looking for, but with this track, it will snow pretty hard in southern Colorado and the San Juans with this type of orientation. Um, and then notice up in the Pacific Northwest, the next jet streak, that's storm number two. And here it comes. And look at this. So this is 11.5. At this point, I really like what I'm seeing in the Pacific Northwest. Look at that powerful jet. And it has a west-northwest orientation to it, which can be a, a powerful player across the Intermountain West. And that second one might have more of an impact on California. Still a long way out, but it might. Um, so I, that's what we're looking at right now. Let me just uh, go through a couple of other things. Um, I also went through the timing aspects on my blog, christhomer.com. If you haven't checked it out, take a look, subscribe. Um, you'll, you'll get notified in your email box whenever there's an update every day. So let's just go through timing. This is the future radar and satellite. Um, so by the time we get into Tuesday morning at 6, here comes the low dropping down into California, hits the Sierra with probably one or two waves of snow, drops down into Arizona, New Mexico. There's Friday at 6. You can see the snow in blue. Here comes the second storm, Pacific Northwest interior. That's Saturday at about 9 p.m. Now with this, I favor um, the Intermountain West with this west-northwest type orientation and the jet stream that I was showing you. Now, it's possible that the whole thing sinks a little further south. And if it does, if the trough is a little bit deeper, it would have more of an impact on the Sierra in California. That's a possibility I'm going to put out there. We're not there just yet, but that's a distinct possibility. I'll play it one more time for you. Tuesday at 6, Wednesday at 6, Thursday at 6 right there. Here's Friday at 6 a.m. Um, there's Friday into Saturday, Saturday at 6, and there's Saturday night. So we've got some good action 
coming our way. And then I went into forecast snowfall. So that's what we'll transition into next. Um, here's uh, phase one, 1031. So all of today through the 4th, you can see the numbers, probably 6 to 12 inches in the Sierra. This might have a pretty good impact on Brian Head. Um, the numbers in the Wasatch and in the central and northern mountains of Colorado really haven't changed. It's all on the northern periphery of this storm track. The Tetons will probably get about four. But southern Colorado will be the big winner with this type of orographic flow. We've got to Telluride, Purgatory, Silverton, and Wolf Creek all at a foot or more. I like what I'm seeing there. And then look at the big numbers in the Pacific Northwest, BC, Banff. Like I said, this is a, this is a bullseye time frame. Um, for that area, 8 to 14 up there, Red Mountain, Fernie, Revelstoke, Sunshine, and Marmot Basin, and Kicking Horse, for that matter. Um, so that's phase one. Here is phase two, the fifth through the eighth. With this type of flow, it definitely favors the Intermountain West. Um, I mean, we could be looking at you know, one to two feet in a lot of places if this pans out. Um, and then the whole thing would get pointed and would fire down moisture into fire snowfall into Colorado, the central and northern mountains of Colorado. But like I said, if the whole axis shifts a little further to the south, then the Sierra are in the mix, and the Wasatch are more in the mix than what you're seeing here. So we'll watch it. We'll see where the axis actually is with data in the next couple of days. But there you go. There's the update. Always appreciate you guys tuning in here. Take care.